things. Okay, we're going to move on with presentations and commendations. And I had some notes that I have here. We're going to begin with a proclamation honoring the 108th Engineering Company construction, United States Army Reserve for the work on Mare Island Naval Cemetery. If I could ask uh, our folks in uniform to kindly join me at the speaker's podium, please. This is an absolute honor to read this proclamation. Um, this is in regards to the Mare Island Cemetery, and a lot of these folks are going to be doing the work for us. I'm very, very proud of our military. Okay, so this is going to be a proclamation honoring the 108th Engineering Company construction, United States Army Reserve, for its work on the Mare Island Cemetery. Whereas Mare Island Naval Cemetery is the oldest cemetery on the West Coast, and whereas the first recorded burial at the Mare Island Cemetery was in 1856, and whereas over the years there were over 900 burials on the cemetery, including three Medal of Honor recipients, recipients, or I'm sorry, descendants of Francis Scott Key, numerous victims of naval disasters, and many who fought and died in foreign lands. And whereas the Navy closed the Mare Island Naval Shipyard in 1996 as a result of a base realignment and the closure action leaving behind the Mare Island Naval Cemetery. Whereas when Mare Island Naval Shipyard closed, the Navy ultimately transferred the Mare Island Cemetery to the city of Vallejo. And whereas at the time of its transfer to the city, the Maryland Naval Cemetery was in a state of disrepair, resulting from the construction of the golf course above it, which created ongoing drainage issues, which have caused damage to the cemetery. And whereas in addition to the drainage issues, the Mare Island Naval Cemetery suffered from vegetation overgrowth, soil subsidence, and general disrepair, all these issues threatened the continued existence of the cemetery and whereas the Department of Defense <clears throat> excuse me Department of Defense selected the Mare Island Naval Cemetery as an innovative readiness training project to not only provide a training opportunity for service members but to provide a lasting benefit to the city of Vallejo and to protect the dignity memory and heritage of the heroes buried at the cemetery and whereas the 108th Engineering Company construction was selected to resolve the many engineering issues affecting the Mare Island Naval Cemetery and that the cemetery can be preserved as a memorial to those interred there as a vital link to the past for future generations and whereas the 108th Engineering Company has long distinguished history of service to the United States, having begun its existence on May 5, 1942, and having served in combat in Luzon during World War II. And whereas the 108th Engineer Company continues to serve the United States of America in support of global war on terror, and whereas the experienced and dedicated soldiers of the 108th Engineer Company have dedicated themselves to the preservation of Mare Island Naval Cemetery to providing countless hours of engineering and construction services. And whereas the work and dedication of the soldiers of the 108th bring great credit upon the United States Army, the United States Army Reserve, and the Innovative Readiness Command and the City of Vallejo. Now therefore be it proclaimed that I, Bob Sampion, Mayor of the City of Vallejo and the Vallejo City Council, do hereby honor and thank the outstanding soldiers of the 108th Engineer Company for their commitment to the city of Vallejo and Mare Island Naval Cemetery. Signed by me, Bob Sampion, Mayor, and dated today's date, January 28th, and signed by the Vallejo City Council. On behalf of the City Council Major, thank, thank you, you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Very grateful. Thank you. Very grateful. Please. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen of the uh, City Council and ladies and gentlemen of Vallejo, on behalf of our Division Commander, Major General Miko Shanley, and on behalf of our Brigade Commander, Colonel Derek Yulela, and on behalf of our Battalion Commander, Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Croy, and particularly 
on behalf of the soldiers standing next to me here, the soldiers of the 801st Engineer Company who are making this project happen. In addition, uh, I also want to include soldiers from the 322nd Engineer Company from Nevada who were up here during December and did some tremendous work. It's uh, these soldiers that are conducting this project and they're doing an outstanding job and uh, we just want to thank you for the warm welcome and for this recognition. And um, I also want to uh, convey the gratification that we feel that our efforts have met with uh, the mayor's and the city's expectations and their um, approval thus far. So um, very thankful for that. And uh, I did want to point out that the United States Army is at its best when we are operating in direct support of the American people. Um, under normal circumstances, an Army unit is focusing on cultivating training readiness. And if you talk to any commander in the Army, it's all about readiness. Readiness, readiness, readiness. And that is something that all of our commanders take very seriously. But on occasion, the training requirements for a unit's readiness tend to overlap with the interests and needs of local government and community civic organizations like the Boy Scouts, the VFW, Habitat for Humanity, whatever. And so it's during those times when the opportunity arises for what's called an IRT project or an innovative readiness training project for, for the Army because as much as we like helping the American public and we love it, our first and foremost position is to be ready to deploy and engage and destroy the enemies of the United States in close combat. And so that must always come as our first priority. But we love doing these IRT projects. And we in the US Navy, we get ourselves involved in these projects more often than many of you might think. Just last year, we conducted 31 of these IRT projects across 19 states and territories. We had over 5,000 military personnel mobilize to help support these efforts. Our medical units last year provided a service to the American people valued at over $13 million. They ended up seeing over 9,000 patients. They performed over 10,300 medical procedures, over 5,500 dental procedures, and issued over 2,800 pairs of eyeglasses. Now, we engineers, for our part, we got into the act to the tune of about $6.1 million for the American public, and that included everything from building houses in remote Alaskan villages to building a new science and learning center at a Girl Scout camp in Hawaii. Um, but I do want to assure you that me and, and my soldiers, we are particularly mindful of the sacred nature of this particular IRT project out here at Mare Island, at the old Mare Island Naval Cemetery. One calls to mind the old adage, show me the manner in which a nation cares for its dead and I will show you the tender mercies of that people. I will show you the loyalty to high ideals and to their obedience to the laws of the land. And I just want to say, Mr. Mayor, the Engineer Regiment has been out there at the cemetery since August, and we're excited to be there, but we're just getting warmed up. The 801st Engineer Company has just returned from the Middle East, and after their 90-day dwell time of leave, which every unit gets once they, they come back from a combat tour, the 801st is going to hit the cemetery with a tidal wave of manpower. And I can assure you all that when we leave out of the Mare Island Naval Cemetery, here in a few months, our intent is to provide a place of repose for our fallen comrades, our fallen Naval comrades, and our fallen Marine Corps comrades. We accept a mission, and we accept that mission and never quit. We never surrender, we never accept defeat, but most importantly, we never leave a fallen comrade. And so we're going to provide a place that our fallen comrades and the people in this community can be very proud of. Thank you. One more presentation. Sure, sure. I received another certificate that I'd like to present, and this is um, 101st. Engineer, I'm sorry, 801st Engineer Company Construction, Innovative Readiness Training at Mare Island Naval Cemetery. On behalf of our grateful nation, we thank and honor your soldiers for their service, valor, and sacrifice while proudly serving with patriotism, distinction, and honor in the ongoing global war on terrorism. We also thank everyone on, in the 801st 
and your higher headquarters for their professionalism, technical proficiency, and immense effort in improving the oldest naval cemetery on the West Coast. Thank you for your continuing loyalty, dedicated duty, and selfless service for our great country. You are all an inspiration to all service members, veterans, and Americans. Sign, or dated today's date, signed by Nestor Liga, Colonel, U.S. Army, retired, and Delphine Metcalf Foster, Sergeant, First Sergeant, U.S. Army, retired, who also was the Disabled Veterans National Commander. I also want to thank uh, Randy Reisner, who is a, a Colonel with the Army Reserve, who has also been spearheading this program. So I want to thank you so much for your effort, Randy, and uh, for keeping this program moving. So to our, our military service, to the Colonel, thank you so very much. Mr. And, Mayor, and again, I'd like to give you all another round of applause. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Can we get the presentation down there? Sure. Okay. All right. They are going to do a quick presentation, which will be up here on the, the yeah, screen. Take your seats. Yes, sir. So, Mr. Mayor, I, I came with a uh, set of slides just to, uh, to uh, kind of give the, uh, the members of the community some sense of what's been taking place out there sure. at the cemetery. So, without further ado, the first part of the uh, brief is uh, here. There we are. So, we're going to talk about the fence lines of these cemeteries. So, most of our work at this time has taken place on the fence lines of these cemeteries. And then we're basically going to break this, uh, this construction project into two different phases. Construction projects inside the property of the cemetery itself, and then another set of projects outside the cemetery on the hillside where we're trying to protect the cemetery from runoff, from a rain. So this, this was the south fence line. And what you see here, so in the Midwest where I come from, these are called weed trees. And basically these are young saplings that have been allowed to, to grow until at this point here where they've destroyed the south fence line of the cemetery. Um, in other circumstances, they would destroy sidewalks, roads, displace headstones, what have you. Um, so here we are beginning the process of removing the material out of that south fence line. And then, let's see. If, so that's the final product as it stands right now. All the, uh, the shrubs, all the uh, trees are gone. There's places in the cemetery right now that are, are getting early morning sunlight for the first time in the decades. So now we'll move over to the north fence line. I'm having the devil of a time with this thing here. Oh, do, do I need to point it to the computer? Randy, can, Randy okay. can you just go ahead and advance? Okay. Thank you. Next. Next. Okay. So now this here is the north fence line. You can see how choked off it, it is. You can notice there's moss actually growing on the fence. Um, but it turns out that what you're looking at here, there were 16 sections of the north fence line that were deemed intact enough that we're actually going to leave those. Now that created a little bit of an issue because with us leaving that section of fence, that made cutting down trees a little bit more ticklish. Not only did we have to worry about not hitting headstones, but we had to try to preserve this fence line. Next. Next. Okay, so this here is what the southern part of the north fence line looks like. We've gotten rid of all the eroded wood and uh, the old fence posts. Go ahead and click ahead to two more, please. Okay, so here, so this picture here is with the 322nd engineers when they were up here last month. And they're beginning to eat away at the side of that hill. You can see that those 16 sections beginning to be exposed to the air. And uh, we will basically be able to protect those sections from the inevitable fate of what would happen. Next, next. Okay, so we brought our dozers to bear and we're cleaning off that hillside. Basically, eventually that's gonna be planted with the grass and it will look beautiful just like the inside of the cemetery. Next, and next. So this is an aerial view. The chain link fence you see at the bottom of the picture is the entryway to an old bunker. It is right outside the cemetery. Uh, let's go ahead and move forward, next. Okay, so one last picture, and it's hard to, to tell here, but if you're looking down that white fence row, towards the end, there's gonna be two or three construction cones. And what was interesting is we had always heard rumors of animal graves out at Mare Island. And we had been told that they were outside the west fence line. But the 322nd, no sooner 
Then they began cutting down trees on this north fence line. Next, we ran in. Oops, go, go back one, please. <laughs> Good going forward. <laughs> So we ran into Captain Goss' uh, headstone for the, the graves of his dogs. Now, Captain Goss was not just anybody. He was the commander of Mare Island during World War II. And he was a, a 1905 graduate of Annapolis. He was decorated for valor during World War I and spent the, uh, the twilight of his career as the commander of Mare Island uh, throughout World War II. So it was very interesting to be able to find these fabled dog graves that we had, had always heard of, about. But go, go next. So during the, the odd time when, when we have time working inside the interior of the cemetery, if there are any graves that have been displaced by these weed trees, um, we, we will take a, a quick minute, cut them down, reposition the headstone. This here took two soldiers one hour to, to fix this headstone. Next. OK, so now we're. Um, we're looking at one of the projects inside the cemetery, and this is fixing the failing retaining walls. You can see here the long wall. You can't see the short one very well. Next. Okay, so th there's kind of a close-up of the, the, the shorter retaining wall behind that first row of crypts. And then next. And th this here kind of tells you what our vertical engineers are going to be looking at. They're going to have to reform and re-pour these new retaining walls, the short one's 44 feet, the long one 134 feet, no small task. Um, go ahead and go next. Okay, and these next three or four pictures are merely going to be uh, pictures of the uh, damage of these retaining walls. What's happening on that hillside, the soil is about 18 inches to two feet thick, and it sits on top of a layer of clay. And so every year, even though the rainy season here is relatively short, what happens is when that soil gets soaked, it begins to slide ever so slowly down that hill. And over the decades, it has caused these retaining walls. It just is, it, it's pushing them over is, is what's happening. Next, you can kind of see there where the retaining walls kind of leaning towards the Napa River. Next, once again, some more damage. Next, so this is a really good picture. You can see the stairs in the original position, and you can see where that retaining wall is being pushed downhill by the soil. Next. Okay, uh, once again, so when we originally took the, the fence down, you will notice at the bottom of the fence, there's a fascia. And the purpose of that, so when you're cutting that many pickets, it's impossible not to have variation. And so in order to hide that imperfection, uh, the uh, carpenters put that fascia at the bottom. But just like the retaining walls above, the hill was gradually sliding down and that fence was acting like a, a dam. And before we took that fence down, if you were out there, that fence would be leaning out onto Imhoff Road uh, next. And you can see here where the soil, um, once we got the fence down, and you can see that one fence post towards the right-hand side where it was leaning out. But um, we're uh, addressing that as well. Next. Okay, one last thing. So those retaining walls, we're going to cannibalize the brick out of those. And in order to create some sort of a historical connection, we're going to create an 18-foot diameter patio around the cemetery flagpole so it no longer turns into a mud hole. And uh, it, it should be a really good project for our bricklayers, some great training that our guys need. Next. And that's just one more angle. You can see the retaining walls in the distance. We're going to carry the bricks up there, build that patio for you. Next. Okay, so now we're going to move to the outside. We're going to talk about probably the biggest threat to the cemetery currently, and that is the rainwater runoff coming down off this hill. So let's, we're going to start at the very top. Next. So that little black circle at the very top, and it's interesting, this picture was taken right after the fire in September. And that fire, for whatever reason, burned almost a perfect image of the watershed area that drains down onto the cemetery and right by it. So that gives you a pretty good idea about what kind of water during a heavy rain is going to be headed towards the cemetery. Well, that, that black circle uh, points out the location of an intact culvert currently. Next. Next. So this is both sides of that culvert. And next. Next. And next. Okay, so, so this is the road. You'll notice both sides of the culvert. This is the road at the very top of the hill. The culvert's not working currently, though, because the pipe that that culvert feeds 
is about 70 to 80 years old. It's a pre-World War II vitrified clay pipe that has failed in too many places to count. So one of the projects outside the cemetery is this clay pipe is going to be replaced with 12-inch corrugated pipe. Next. Next. That, that kind of shows the location of the pipe. It's about 300 feet of the pipe is what we're, t we're talking. Next. So this here, once again, 322nd guys dug this pipe out. And like I said, it was a mess. It was definitely showing its, its age. Next. Next. And so this is an, an aerial of the culvert, the pipe leading downhill. Next. Next. And so the, the pipe goes downhill, goes into the tree line right at the top of one of the two big, biggest projects outside of the cemetery property line. Next. Next. So that, that little brown area there, that is one of the ravines that has been caused by years of water erosion. Next. And so that this spot here happens to be six feet deep. It doesn't look that bad, but it, being that it's covered with vegetation, but there are some dangerous areas up there. If you fall off and you can definitely break a, uh, an ankle. Next. Next. So this one here is going to be the southwest ravine. This is the one we're currently working on. We almost have this one dozed out clear to the the top of the hill. This one was even worse. Next. So this is the erosion at the very top of the hill. If you look off to the right hand of that picture in the distance, you'll see a large eucalyptus, and that is the corner of the cemetery. So that's how far this erosion is working its way downhill. And uh, my dozer operators have pretty much got this mitigated for right now. Ultimately, next, next, we're going to put rip wrapping in there. And so we're going to def definitely try to mitigate any future rainwater runoff. Next. Next. And so now, lastly, is the water coming di directly off the hill and right through the cemetery itself. So that blue line there indicates the location of the ditch that the mayor had made mention of earlier. When the golf course up there was built, they cut off the end of the uh, ditch so that it could not reach the... Uh, the watershed further down and away from the cemetery. And so what was happening was the water was filling that ditch and then sheeting next. So you can see that ditch right there and it's sheeting across that trail and running down into the cemetery causing great damage. And so what we are, are gonna do, we're, we're going to get one of our graders up there, blade that ditch back out and slope it so that that ditch opens back up to the area where the uh, people that built the uh, golf course kind of ruined it for us, but uh, next. Next. Okay, so once again, second ditch on the hillside. Next. And this is another area. You can kind of see the cemetery off to the left-hand side. This is getting down close to the cemetery. We're going to blade this. Next. Next. And then finally, as a, as a final line of defense for this, the cemetery, next, we're going to put in a trapezoid concrete channel, and this is going to catch whatever's left. If we don't catch it here, uh, it, it's, it's going to make its way into the cemetery. Next. Next. And then once again, next, you'll see there, there was a drain here. I don't know if the Navy built this or whether somebody built this after the uh, post was closed. But if you're looking at that drain, that is much too small. Every year when the leaves would fall, that would be covered over. And you can see the resulting damage as the water found another way to get downhill, eroding the hillside. That's going to be fixed. Next. Next. And then there, there's a pipe that leads down to Imhoff Road. Next. Of course, it's been failed. It's been damaged over the years. That's going to be re replaced. Next, next, next. And then at the very bottom, here you have the uh, drain. This is where the pipe goes underneath Imhoff and then out towards the Napa River. Next, next. So what you're looking at here, so about three hours south of Mare Island is my headquarters. I work for the 397th Engineer Battalion in Marina, California, which is down by the old Fort Ord, which shut down basically the same time that the Mare Island shipyard did. Well, the cemetery there on the Presidio of Monterey fell into some disuse too. That it, it was looking old, so the Presidio of Monterey said, hey, we've got to do something with this cemetery, kind of like what we're doing here. You can see chalk lines where they've got all the headstones dug up. They're going to make everything dress right dress. And Mayor, I, I just want to let you, your citizens know that the 801st Engineer Company, we're going to do our very best to do the same thing that they did at the Presidio of Monterey next. And with some, wow. some work, we can have the Mare Island Cemetery looking like that bad boy right there. So, nice. right. Appreciate it, man.
Thank you. Hope I didn't take too much time. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.